sit Marla, baby. Hang it out, Marla. <laughs> oh, so Marla, that is so. Right on, baby. Compared with you, Picasso's a load of old crap. <laughs> oh, God. What time is it? Half past twelve. Oh, well. That's the late night movie up the spot. Oh. I was looking forward to that. We don't get enough George Formby films. <laughs> oh, make the woo. He got the naughty eye that flickered. You should see him flicker when he's hiding, lady. No, no, you're quite right. Well, suppose I better lock up the stately home. Boy, my master shots. He won't feed my little wrong. Boy, What's the idea of leaving me out here in the pouring rain? You want me to get pneumonia, don't you? Please, God, I didn't know you were... Ha, ah, ah, ha, ah. ha! No umbrellas up in the house, it's bad luck! <laughs> anyway, it's up past 12 at night. Where have you been to this time of night? For the last quarter of an hour, I've been standing out there knocking the door down. I didn't hear you. Ah. You was asleep, weren't you? That bleeding, horrible music blaring out. Horrible? Marla? My Ken Russell swat you dead. <laughs> Where's your front door key, anyway? In there somewhere. <laughs> I'm not carrying that bunch round with me in this weather. If I was struck by lightning, I'd have had it. <laughs> you were late home. I waited till eight. Where were you? I called in Skinner's arms for a drink on the way out. And is the horse out in the pouring rain? No, I didn't. I took him in the saloon bar and I bought him a pint of bitter and a pack of crisps. <laughs> he knows what his right leg's for, don't you worry. <laughs> I can't, I left him outside. Love, he's got air, hasn't he? He don't get as wet as I do. Proxy weather. Three solid days it's been raining. It's all them Indians over here. <laughs> they brought the monsoons with them. <laughs> They're all moaning round the corner in Calcutta Crescent. <laughs> I think they're afraid their crops will get washed away. <laughs> Gold Oak Road's flooded. I know. I've just been down it, haven't I? Them bus drivers, they see a puddle and they go straight through it. The waves went right over the top of my umbrella. Standing there like a drowned rat I was. Well, it's your own fault. You should be out this time of night in this weather at your age. Where have you been? I've been out. I know you've been out. Where? Oh, it ain't your kung fu night, Huggy <laughs> John. It ain't your old time dancing. And it ain't your cordon bleu cookery classes. You ain't been going to them cordon bleus lately. I think you've been playing the wag, judging by that load of old rubbish you served up last night. That was a cock o van. That was a cock up. <laughs> I've been aware of van coming. Well, there shouldn't be feathers in the gravy, sure. <laughs> oh, God, that's for tonight. God help. That was lovely. That was rubbish. A bit of, bit of beef in pastry. It's not little bits of beef in pastry. If you're going to criticize my cook and get the name right, it's Booth Wellington. <laughs> I wonder where my last pair got to. Where have you been? Mind your own business. It is my business. I'm responsible for you. Half past twelve at night, roaming the streets in a plastic Mac. <laughs> and what are people going to think? They ain't got over Jack the Ripper around here. <laughs> Look, I've been sat here sick with worry. I mean, suppose, supposing you was ill, supposing you was knocked down by a bus. They don't knock me down, they just go through the puddles. <laughs> yeah. Put that right through your puddles if you don't own up. Now, come on, where have you been? 
Oh, I suppose you'll break me down eventually. I might as well tell you now. I've been to a spiritualist meeting. <laughs> You've been where? To a spiritualist meeting. You have Not really. Yeah, I have. I've been in contact with the dead. I bet that scared him. <laughs> what do you mean? You have been in contact with the dead. I have. I spoke to Dan Leno tonight and Henry VIII. Dan Leno and Henry VIII? Are they doing a double act? Henry, who was that lady I thought you were last night? That was no lady. That was my fourth wife. Boom, boom. <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? Of course I don't believe you. Well, it's true. I was at a seance down the Gold Hawk Road. Oh, well, that explains it. I mean, Henry VIII was always up and down the Gold Hawk Road. <laughs> you could keep him away. Forget a bird down there. So, l let, me, let me get this straight. You have been sitting there in the Gold Hawk Road in a parlour, in the dark. Yeah, six of us all round a table holding hands. And then all of a sudden, she goes into a trance. Who does? The medium, Madame Fontana. And she introduces her spirit guide. A Red Indian? Yeah, how'd you know? They're always Red Indians. Yeah. Well, this one's Geronimo. And he says... <laughs> I have somebody here who would like to speak to all of you there. And then this voice says, Good evening. This is Henry VIII speaking. And tonight is my guest night. I'd like you to give a big hand to my first guest and your friend of my friend, Dan Lino. <laughs> yes, you're not going to take it seriously. I'm going to bed. Don't you have nonsense. You don't believe it, do you? A voice comes on says he's Henry VIII. I mean, he really said he was Christopher Columbus, you'd have believed him. No, I wouldn't. Cos I met him last week. <laughs> yeah, very nice he was. Yeah, I got on well with Chris. Christopher Columbus spoke to you? That's right. In English, of course? Yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah. In a Cockney accent? No, he had an American accent. I see. <laughs> he's born in Genève 500 years ago and he's got an American accent. That's very reasonable. Well, he discovered it, didn't he? Probably rubbed off on him. But uh, it's a take on. I mean, you hear a few voices. That's some old bird doing a Mike Yarwood, and you get sucked in. I, I mean, you, you, after the show, you bugger a father, you're aimed out into the Gold Hawk Road, and you get half drowned by a passing bus. It's all so pathetic. You're so sceptical. He spoke well of you. Who? Gandhi. <laughs> Gandhi? I've never met Gandhi in my life. Oh, you don't have to meet him. They know all about you. You're taking the gypsies, aren't you? <laughs> he said, don't worry about Harold. He said, he's going to do all right. I am all right. I don't need Gandhi to tell me. Oh, God, I've been waiting for this. I've been watching for the first signs of senile decay, and now we've got it. It's all over. My old man's a nutter. He's got squirrels. <laughs> very real. They're all up there waiting to contact us, all sitting round waiting to be called. Sounds like round the back on the Michael Parkinson show. Don't look dead, dead. It doesn't happen like that. I mean, there's no such thing. Once you're dead, you're dead. Look, think about it. I mean, why should Christopher Columbus want to talk to you? He'd never been any further than the Isle of Wight. <laughs> I, I mean, if, he, if he's up there, He's got Drake to talk to, uh, Magellan, Captain Cook, Van Diemen. Why well, should he want to come down the Gold Hawk Road and talk to Rag and Bone with? I don't know. Why does anybody want to talk to Parkinson? <laughs> All I know is they spoke to me. Look, look, settle down now. You tell me, how did you get involved in all this? It was Dorothy. Dorothy? Yeah. I met her down at the Derby and Joan Club. Lovely woman. You'd like her, Harold. I'm very fond of her. And you're both very lonely. That's right. And she's a spiritualist. Yeah. And she introduced you to uh, Madame Arcati. Yeah. No, Fantana. And Dorothy is a widow woman. Yeah. How'd you know? That's what got her into it. She's trying to get in touch with her husband. Any luck? No, not yet. No, I bet he's well out of it, he is. <laughs> Poor old devil. 
I bet he thought he was safe up there. <laughs> Honestly, every tombstone down the road has got rest in peace. Why can't I leave them alone? We're not doing any harm. I don't suppose you've uh, spoken to the top men yet. The top men? Yeah. The great rag and bone men in disguise. <laughs> what does he reckon to it all? Oh, that's blast me. Don't talk like that. You'll be struck down. No, oh, well, Gandhi said I was going to be all right. <laughs> You may not be struck down down here, but you will be struck down up there. I'm not going up there. It must be a right boring place if all I can do on Thursday nights is talk to you. <laughs> Look, when I leave this veil of tears, nobody's getting in touch with me. When I get to wherever I'm going, my phone's coming straight off to York, I can tell you. Not a load of old couplers. It's not, Al. There is a life after death. They're trying to get in contact with us. There are spirits all round us. There's about half a bottle inside you. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. What's that? It's a Ouija board. I bought it off Madame Fontana. It receives messages from the other side. Oh, I see. That's for the ones who's lost their voices through keep talking to silly little sods like you. <laughs> Put your finger on there. I ask questions and the glass moves round the board and spells out the answers. Ready? Ready. Is... And no frivolous questions, right? Yes. Is there anybody there? Is there anybody there? It's moving. Yes. Well, I could very well say no, could he? <laughs> is it, brother? What is your name? H I T L E R. <laughs> Ask him who won the war. Might upset him. <laughs> Have you got a message for anybody here? Yes. Is it for Harold? No. <laughs> Must be for me. <laughs> what is your message? You are. A S I L L Y T U R D. Silly turd! <laughs> You've been pushing it! Of course I've been pushing it! I told you to learn about God's wallet! You see. <laughs> well, what's that supposed to be? We're having another meeting tomorrow night. In here. You're not having a seance here? Yeah, they're all coming, Madam Fontana, Dorothy, eh, all of them. Yeah, we're going to try and get in touch with your mother. Oh, no! Oh, yeah. You want to watch it, mate? She'll give you the right mouthful if she catches you sitting in the dark, <laughs> holding hands with another woman. <laughs> anyway, what, what's she going to say to her? You ain't spoken to her for nigh on 40 years. I mean, you didn't have much in common then. I'd like to talk to her, Al. I miss her. Besides, there's something I want to ask her. Hey. Ask her why she put your clean vest. <laughs> I'll show you. You'll be laughing the other side of your face tomorrow night. I'm going to talk to all of them. Your mother, Gandhi, Christopher Columbus, Henry VIII. Henry the Ninth. <laughs> Dan Lino. And, 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 and Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of fine mess you got me into, Stan. <laughs> Madame Fontaine. Oh. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Whoops. Mr. and Mrs. Sheldon, do, do. <laughs> what shocking weather we're having. Oh, yes, it is, it is. It's been bit... It's been... Uh, <laughs> bent down all night. Harold, come out the 
little ladies all for their coats? Well, oh, Harold. This is my son Harold, mm. Madame Fontana. So charmed, I'm sure. Are you joining us tonight, Harold? Uh, yes, uh, that's all right with you. Perfectly all right. Perfectly all right. Glad to have you aboard. You radiate an aura of innocence, spiritual calm, and inner goodness. I expect that's the Andrews liver salts. And this is... <laughs> Mr and Mrs Shelley. Who's this? This is Dorothy, Mrs Daddy. <laughs> I'm so pleased to meet you, Harold. I've heard so much about you. Really? Who from? My father or Gandhi? <laughs> I expect we'll be seeing a lot of one another in the future. I hope we're going to be good friends. I bought some sweeties for you. <laughs> and this is Mr. and Mrs. Sheldon. Yeah. Thank you very much. Shall we uh, all go in? Why not? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely first class, this is. This is a perfect room for a contact. I can feel it coming out. <laughs> I can feel the vibrations. Oh, yes, I'm sorry about that. That's the flyover. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all them juggernauts. You know, they practically has me out of bed some nights. Sometimes, when they go past, I have seen his teeth move across the floor on their own. Yak, 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 just like that. Really? You know, that could be a poltergeist. I think it's more likely a petrol tanker. <laughs> ah, I can see you're a sceptic, Harold. You don't believe in the living dead. Oh, yeah, 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 I, I believe in them. I've been living with one for 40 years. <laughs> well, we'll see what tonight brings. We may yet convince you. <laughs> Shall we begin? Places, everybody. <laughs> Lights. Yeah. What time is the big picture? <laughs> now, I must ask, please, for complete silence and concentration, and please, no sudden noises or disturbances whilst I am in a trance. I will ask you now to all join hands. Join hands, it comes jolly. <laughs> She's gone. Blimey, that was quick. <laughs> she on piecework. No, she don't mess about. She went straight to the meat. She's trying to make contact with Geronimo. She'd do better to light a fire, wouldn't she? <laughs> Are you there, Geronimo? <sighs> Are you there, Ge I am here. Geronimo? Are you angry, Geronimo? You were a long time coming. I expect you went down the cold old road, could he? <laughs> I am ready. Ooh, is there anybody there who wishes to contact anybody here? Yes. Is Mrs. Daddy with you? Yes, yes, I'm here. He wishes to speak to you. Hello! Dotty! It's George! It is! He always called me Dotty! He was the bad judge, wasn't he? <laughs> Dotty Dotty! How are you, George? How am I? Oh, not so bad. My arthritis has cleared up. I'm so glad. How are you keeping? Oh, not so bad. But my arthritis hasn't gone. Oh, well, it will when you come up here. How's the weather? Still raining. Never mind, it's good for the garden. How many geraniums? Not as good as when you did them, George. Well, try putting a bit of potash on them. And next week's gardener's corner. Oh, <laughs> I do miss you so, George. Oh, are you lonely? I am a bit. Well, why don't you get married again? I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I'm thinking of getting married again, George. <laughs> <laughs> you do that, and I hope you'll be very happy. Oh, thank you, George. Well, I've got to go now. Somebody else here wants to talk to you. Goodbye, Dotty. Goodbye, George. Oh, go oh, when's Henry the Eighth coming? Oh. <laughs> here you go, here you go. Geronimo. Oh, I am here. Is there anybody else there 
who wishes to speak to anybody else here? Yes. Is Albert Steptoe with you? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. I have your wife, Emily, here. Oh, my God. Is that you, Albert? Emily? Hello, Albert. You haven't been down to the grave lately, have you? I'll, I'll go in the morning. It's your mother. Cobblers. It is. It's your voice. <laughs> Who are you speaking to, Albert? Harold. He sat next to me. Harold. My little Harold. He should be in bed. He's only five. He's not. He's 40 now. <gasps> He's older than I am. Oh, come on. Now that's enough of this. <laughs> Harold, it's Mummy talking. Are you there, Harold? Say hello to your mother. No, I'm not, not going to... Go on, say hello to her. Oh, go... Hello. <laughs> Mum? Emily? Yes, Albert? Would you mind if I married again? Of course not, Albert. Little Harold needs a mother. <laughs> Have you found somebody, Albert? Yeah. She's sitting right next to me. Dorothy Dudley. Oh, she'll make you a wonderful wife, Albert. Y you sure you don't mind? Of course not, Albert. <laughs> but you and Harold must promise to love her and cherish her and look after her as long as she lives. Oh, yes, we will, we will. Oh, no, we will. Ah! Ah! Such a silly woman. Why don't you everybody here? So is Albert. Oh. Harold, are you mad? Oh. I was talking to your mother. You oh. wasn't talking to my mother. Oh. You was talking to her. Oh. The Fiona Richmond there. Come on, get on. Get on. My mother's dead. <laughs> you shouldn't have broken the circle. Are you all right, Miss Montana? Because she's all right. You might have killed her. Rubbish. Uh, I see. She, she's only play acting. She's a phony. Uh, Don't you talk about my daughter like that. Uh, you who? Uh, no, uh, I never saw her that. A mother and daughter. Of uh, course. Uh, she, she's trying to unload her mother. Yeah, uh, yeah. You just uh, find some senile old twit with an hard working son. And you is Quincy. Right, now, come on, missus. That's it. Out, out, out. Come on, come on. How uh, uh, did she get married again, Albert? You must marry again, fine squaw wig one. Come on, come on. Get your umbrella and get out. Nobody's going to be my dead away. Oh, I mean, I'm in the Sire, would you like a sausage roll? What? No venison? No, we don't have none of that. Paul, true. Oh, no! Oh, God, she's gone again. Come on, Mrs. Right, Mrs. Come along, Beryl. I don't wish to stay in this house a moment longer. Dorothy, will you have a sausage roll? No, I will not. Your son has made it perfectly clear that I'm not welcome in this house. Well, you're welcome to a sausage roll. Oh, go with a sausage roll. I don't care how much money you've got in the bank. I have no intention of being unloaded onto you. And as for your villa in Mallorca, you can keep it. Uh, uh, unhand me, Woolsey. Oh. Great green sleeves is my delight. A plague on both your houses. Especially the one in Mallorca. <laughs> what happened? Did we get through? Yes, of course you got through. Did she get in touch with Tiddles? I didn't hear him meow. We'll try again next week, dear. Well, we yes. should have brought his collar. Yes, we should have brought his collar. With a bell on it. With a little bell Because he likes it. that bell. Yes, yes. And he'd have heard it from the garden. <laughs> What villa in Mallorca? What money in the bank? Well, you know how it is. When you're trying to pull a bird, you sort of embroider it a bit, don't you? <laughs> embroider a bit? That's the old of the Bayou Tapestry, as far as we're concerned. <laughs> All 200 feet of it. Fancy her being her daughter. Do you think they were just after me for me money, Harold? No, not just. 
but it helped. So it gave you an advantage over the other contenders. You, you well out of that, Dad? Yeah, I suppose so. Uh oh. Good night, Harold. Good night, Dad. Harold, do you think she was really a phony, that Madame Fontana, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, there's no, there's no doubt about it. There's a lot of them about. I suppose so. I wish you'd seen her do Laurel and Hardy. She was good at that. <laughs> Better than me. <laughs> it stopped raining. Good. You won't get splashed tomorrow. No. Well, sweet dreams, Harold. There's some sausage rolls over there. All right, thank, thank you. Good night. It would have been nice to have had a chat with you, Mum. Good night, Harold. Mum? Dad? Can I sleep in your bed? 